very unlucky is badminton. Second in 1984, second in 1985. I'm sure he'll be back there again next year to try and win probably the most famous street event in the world. Mark not taking any chances, being as quick and as economical as he can. Attacking this. Oh, he's gone. The Olympic champion has gone. He attacked it, but Charisma just couldn't keep his feet. What a sadness is that is for Mark Todd. What a sadness for New Zealand. And now again, that puts the team competition wide open. It is in replay. The fall of Mark Todd. Charisma just not able to get his legs up and out quick enough. So it slithers over and just in an e twists his back legs to one side in an effort to get over and tips himself and Mark into the water. And here's our current leader, Finvara, Torrance Fleischman from the United States of America in the lead after the dressage with 46 penalties. What a chance she now has of taking this world title. Leader after the dressage. Virginia Lang. Very easily, Virginia through the early goal defence. As Mark now really attacking the state banks, and easily through. Mark having had that fall, now not wa wanting to waste any time at all. As Ginny sails over the suspended bridge, as she sets out onto this long, galloping section of the course. Over the flower beds. Torrance Fleischman at the Jubilee Jays taking the shortest course. Did it nicely. Virginia Lang right up on top of the hill at Gawler. Looking for the brewery drays. Price is just suffering a little bit at the top of the hill. And yes, she's going for the right on the right hand side, so she'll be hoping that Kinvara puts it astride, and he does, and she gets away with it. Now that's the luck, the sort of luck you need to have if you're going to win a world championship. And my word, she seems to have had it today. Yes, well, she was leading our dressage, Mark, and she's been a good competitor for a good many years and she would be really riding for gold now. Have a check. Virginia Lang just over the last fence, sprinting towards Let's the finish. There goes the tail. And Take a look at the watch to see what time she's taken for the cross-country course. Paul Dez having a little look at the drop down into Dead Man's Pass. Taking the shorter, more difficult course. And did it nicely. Very clever Valdez was to slither out over that third rail. Wayne smiling all over his face. That would have given him a lot of confidence. As he gallops across now towards the West End Tavern. And safely through the tavern wall. Wayne now coming to the state banks and he kicks in, sails nicely over the middle element 
and beautifully out over the parallel bars and Wayne certainly getting a lot of enthusiasm out of this Australian crowd. Torrance Fleischmann. Clear up to this point and doing it nicely. Torrance seems to be riding very sensibly. There have been times in the past where she has cracked under pressure. But so far, so good for Torrance and Finvara. We're well, very excited, Virginia, Virginia Lang. I don't know what she said. Yeah. Wayne Roycroft remounting, obviously having had a fall. What a tragedy for Australia that was. Finvara going on to the gullies. But Wayne having fallen at the Bentley gates. Time going to be the all important thing. So now we have for America Kim Wong's on the Grey Goose and she's going in the early part of the course. In fact, has got around while we've been watching the top riders goes through now the early Gaul offences, the yard and heading to the suspended bridge. As Torrance is discussing her round with Mike Page, the American chef to keep, and trying to work out how the times will be affected. Uh, Fair Lady had a dressage score of 65.4 in 22nd place, and so um, despite how well she may go, it's very unlikely she's going to figure in the final individual placing. Safely over the brewery trays and turns downhill now. <laughs> as we see an enormous recovery from the French Gardini of the third and Thierry Tuzan in the water, although he's still going to have a refusal of the third element of the water. It will have saved 40, but he may have had added to it if it'd been a fall. Um, but it was a very good recovery indeed as he went down in the water and Thierry kept his balance, sat still and allowed the horse to come up again. Now he's trying to conserve a little energy, takes the easy way up the bank out of the water and now has to get his act into gear and get things mobilized for the big spread coming up at the double brush oxy. And we have a brand new leader, as we thought, for New Zealand, Tinks Pottinger and Volunteer have no time penalties, finish the two days on their dressage score of 54.4. They have a huge lead of 22 marks over fellow New Zealander Trudy Boyce with Mossman with the young rider, the young individual rider from Great Britain, Anne-Marie Taylor, and just in time, lying third at this stage. Thanks. Overnight, look, the all-up world champion with Virginia Legg and Priceless. Three fences behind her, Trudy Boyce, and Mossman for New Zealand in third place, and young Anne-Marie Taylor from Great Britain in fourth, and Lorna Clark from Great Britain and Myros in fifth. And then this morning, out at Roseworthy College, the horses came before the ground jury and the veterinary panel and here we see Tinks Pottinger and Volunteer walking away from the judges. And there, Hubert Le Gravier, the president of the jury, asking her to come back and go again. And as she jogs away, Volunteer just limping ever so slightly, but enough 
for the vets to say that he was unable and not fit to compete in the show jumping phase this afternoon. And there, the thumbs down. Tinks is, is a fantastic rider. It was, it's a brilliant horse. Went absolutely superbly yesterday. And, I mean, I didn't know anything about it. Um, I didn't even see the horse trot up, but he obviously wasn't quite right. Which is very, very depressing. Um, and I just hope she remembers yesterday and remembers that she is pretty well, as far as I'm concerned, world champion. Yes, Venture Busby and Mandy Orchard. Venture Busby, who lost both his front shoes on the cross-country phase yesterday, and this morning his front feet were too sore to be presented to the vets. Benton's Way, who had a fall at the state banks, and he strained his back at that fence, and so, again, was not presented this morning. Flying Colours and Karen Stives, who was ruled out this morning with a slightly strained shoulder muscle. A real hard luck story for Melanie O'Brien and Clarence. She rode Clarence out this morning. He was perfectly sound, but while out riding, whether he trod on a stone or whatever, nobody knows. But when she came back, he was lame, and unfortunately still lame, when he went in front of the vets. And so that was the end of Melanie's chances. And then Tink Spottinger and Volunteer, who you've seen. A great tragedy for Colin Irving and Edgel Charlie, who went so well yesterday, ran that cross-country course to finish in eighth position individually. But he, unfortunately, during that round, struck into his front foot with one of his back feet, giving him a nasty cut round the edge of his coronet. And so he was out. And finally, Finvara, of course, the overnight dressage leader, who, in fact, reared up and went over backwards at the start of the cross country yesterday, down here on the race course at the start of phase A. And she was unable to prevent, present Finvara this morning. And the Grey Groose and Kim Walls, he too lost his shoes on the cross country round yesterday and was too sore to prevent to the vets this morning. Well, the teams, I mean, I'm a, Great Britain have got it absolutely and they're home and dry. They've got 24 fences in hand over the French, who've got another 12 fences in hand over the Australians. And with the New Zealanders, a long way back in fourth place. The knocking down of the obstacle incurs a penalty of five if the horse refuses. The first time, the penalties are 10. Second refusal, the penalties are 20. If they refuse the third time, they would be eliminated. The fall of rider or horse and rider, the penalty is 30. And there's Mark Todd. And a rueful smile for Mark Todd. And the total of, of course, the current Olympic champion. He won Babington in 1980 on his great horse Southern Comfort before being second in 1984 and 85 on Charisma. Mark, New Zealand last night must have been on a real high. Yeah, well, things were looking really good last night and we were all very pleased and uh, but things are a lot different now. What was the feeling like when uh, Volunteer was vetted out this morning? Well, we had a fair idea last night. He pulled up really good after the cross country, but uh, last night back at the stables he wasn't too good and we thought it'd be touch and go whether he got through or not. Mark, your own performance, how much extra pressure was added to you being the Olympic champion? Uh, I don't think a, a great deal, no. Um, I'm used to it now. Um, I made a silly mistake at the water and uh, paid dearly for it. So just two fences down to Mark Todd to give him a score for the three days of 141.6. One life gone there. You can afford just one more and you can hear a pin drop 
in this arena. The crowd hushed, willing Barry on his way. Yes, Mark, I think every Australian spectator here sitting absolutely on the edge of their seat, wanting Barry to maintain his overnight position. Gives the parallel rail a wrap, but it stays in position as he turns to come to fence 10, the triple bar. Barry sights it up, picks right onto it and jumps it very well. Only the white gate and the treble remaining for him. Clean over the gate. Barry using all of his skill. Sets last tango up, in over the first, clear over the second, and clear out over the final element of the treble. Time is right, so there'll be no time penalties to add to his show jumping round. Marie Christine Dua from France with Harley. Currently in the individual fifth position and with four fences in hand over Australia's Barry Rycroft and Last Tango. Clear so far. Of course, both Mary Christine and Harley, vastly experienced members of the French team every year since 1982. Harley, 13 years old. This will be his last World Championship. And how great it could be if he could finish that career on a clear round. Yes! Clear and clear for time. So she retains her fifth place. But of course, if Lorna could go clear, she then really applies the pressure to the person in third position at this stage. 19th after the dressage, did really well in the cross-country speed and endurance to only incur time penalties for a total of 84.20. Of course, Lorna, who won the individual silver medal at the European Championships last year in helping Britain to take that team championship. Of course, here today, France already assured of the team silver at these world championships. In Australia, already assured of the team bronze, thanks to that marvelous round by Barry Roycroft. Great Britain in line to take out the team title at these World Championships, provided Lorna and Ginny Leng to follow her can navigate their way safely around this show jumping course. Lorna moving on, not wanting to incur any time penalties, just steadies my Ross down for the triple bar. She'll certainly do the same thing again before turning into this gate. Lorna trying everything she knows. Vastly experienced, now 42 years old, and a proud mother. Oh, Ross rattles the first part. Oh, Lorna grabs him in the middle, but she's clear. She's clear. Anne-Marie in third spot after the cross-country speed and endurance with penalties of 81.8. So can't afford to have a single rail down. She wishes to retain the bronze medal at this stage. Oh, and it's gone. It's gone. So that puts her down to Fourth place. Oh, and another one as well. Well, that means she's dropped another position, Mark. 
has now gone back to fifth. That's a great sadness. I think even the other competitors will feel for Anne-Marie because really the whole essence of this competition is the cross-country course and what a brilliant effort she put up on that course yesterday and nobody really likes to see a person drop right out of the positions in this show jumping phase. Our next competitor is Trudy Boyce on Mossman from New Zealand. So, Lorna Clark and Mai Ross are now guaranteed of third place with Mary Christine Indrua and Harley guaranteed fourth. Trudy Boyce has had her one fence down. She cannot afford another. Can't even afford a quarter of a tie penalty. Now the lead is 0.2 only. Now, Trudy obviously will have realized the fence is down and that's added even more pressure to her. You can hear cameras all around this arena clicking as she jumps every fence. The atmosphere really electric. Wasman fighting for his head. Now she's clear over those tricky planks. I think after all the bad luck that New Zealand has suffered in these championships, the crowd really behind Trudy. They'd like to see her take out this silver medal. She must steady back there now for the gate. Now just the combination to go. Trudy's heart will be absolutely in her mouth. She's going a bit quick. She's over the middle element. And the last. And she's all right for time. The silver medal is hers. And we have a score for Ginny Lang is even smiling five, and saying well done as well. And Trudy Boyce, there she is just so pleased, the tears rolling down her face, being congratulated by the other members of the New Zealand team. Ginny Lang, of course, the reigning European champion on this horse. And priceless, normally a very careful jumper. And what a great thing it would be for her if she could add this world title to the European title. The only person ever to have done that before is, of course, Lucinda Green, who sadly is not riding in these championships. Lucinda Green, the reigning world champion, but only for another few minutes. It was a great disappointment to both English and Australian supporters alike when Lucinda and her great Australian horse, Regal Realm, was ruled out of these championships with a leg problem back in March. Mark, you can hear a pin drop at this arena at the moment. It's had quiet. Yes, the crowd really loving this. And I think appreciating seeing perhaps one of the greatest street event riders of all time riding here in Gawler today. Ginny, who has won really everything that there is to win in the sport over the last two years. And just rounds it off with a beautiful clear round.
It's a measure, really, of a superiority. But Ginny's managed to win this World Championship. Standing ovation, Mark, for the crowd here. It's marvellous. Yes, uh, Ginny, I mean, she went not at her best in the dressage, not at her best in the cross country, but still managed to win this World Championship. Being congratulated there by Ian Stark. He really tried, didn't he? The new world champion. I think my main concern was A, try not to go before the bell, and B, remember the course, which is sometimes a problem with me. Um, but uh, I, I fortunately did man manage to remember the course, and I didn't go before the bell, and that was basically what I was trying to do, because um, uh, relevant to the fact that it, obviously I'd had to jump around for the individual. I mean, team wise, I had to complete the competition in order to keep our team ahead so it's sort of you know you've got your other other mates to worry about you know because you've got to get round and you've got to complete the course otherwise your other mates aren't going to do very well so it's a sort of double worry I think and, uh, four very very happy people Ian Stark, Chris Strawn, Ginny Lane and Lorna Clark waving to the crowd now the French team, and how pleased they will be with their silver. Of course, Barry Roycroft being congratulated there by Prince Philip. Andrew Hoy receiving his.